KDXI St. George, Radio St. George at 100.3 FM. And we welcome you to The Extraordinary Talk Show, a show to help you understand yourself and the world from a new perspective. And in the process, help you find your own personal extraordinary. And now your host for The Extraordinary Talk Show, Della Hill. Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Extraordinary Talk Show. Guys, it is December 16th, which means that we have, is that nine days till Christmas? So we're really counting down. And guys, this is a tough time of year. It can either be amazing or awful or a combination of both. And most of you probably know what I'm talking about. You have some reason why the holidays are hard for you. Do you know the holidays are hard for a lot of people? And there's a lot of reasons why. You may not be aware of it, but you have social media friends who turn off their social media for the month of December because these people are people who have a hard time with the holidays. And honestly, it can be painful to be watching everybody else opening presents on Facebook and Insta and whatever when you're alone or when you're lonely or when things aren't going the way that you hoped that they would. Christmas can be a really, really sad time. I'm not only here to talk about the sadness, I'm here to talk about how to make it better, how to deal with that, how to cope with that, and how to come out of your holiday having a good holiday, even if it wasn't what matches all the pictures in the commercials. Do you know what I mean? To start with, I want to tell you a story about one of my Christmases that was really rough for me, but then that turned around. It was 1995, guys. So we're going back a couple decades. It was my first Christmas on my own. It was my first Christmas living by myself, except I had a roommate. And my roommate was great. Her name was Jean. And her boyfriend's name was Duff. Now, my name is Della. And if you don't have your reading glasses on, Duff and Della look kind of similar. So it was my very first Christmas away from home, very first Christmas on my own. My mother had sent me, I think, three gifts, which if I'd been home would have been totally normal, totally fine. But she mailed them to me. I had them under my tree. And my tree, by the way, was about 18 inches tall. And it was decorated with gold coins. And... I felt very proud of my first tree, but I had these three gifts underneath it and I'd even volunteered to work because I knew I was going to be home alone and I didn't want to be sad. I didn't want to be alone. So I'd volunteered to work and nobody took me up on it. So here it is Christmas morning. I'm all alone. I wake up. I go out to look for my three presents. Okay. I've got, I have presents to open. I've got three presents, except I go out there and there's only two presents. And I kind of shrugged it off. Well, I knew there's one, an extra one somewhere. Well, I opened up the two presents. One of them was a book that I wanted by Shel Silverstein. One of them was a CD that I already had. And I couldn't find my third present. And when my roommate wake up, woke up, I asked her about it. And it turned out that her boyfriend had thought, without his reading glasses, thought that that present was to him. He thought it said to Duff from mom and dad, not to Della from mom and dad. And At the time, I really liked wearing guys' jeans. So my parents had sent me a pair of men's Wranglers with my sizes that obviously didn't match his sizes. They'd actually got them reversed because I wore a 32-36 and he wore a 36-32. So he was just going to exchange it. But then when we realized it was my present, he gave back to me. Point was, I woke up on Christmas morning kind of devastated. I got three presents. One of them was something I already had. And one of them was opened by somebody else and I got it back. But the point was, it was really, really sad. And I went to my room and I cried. I was 18 years old. Having what was for me the worst Christmas, because my parents had done a really great job making sure that I had good Christmases. We didn't have a ton, but we had good Christmases. And so that Christmas was pretty devastating for me. And I called my parents and I talked to them and I tried not to let them know how upset I was and how sad I was, but I just wanted to tell them hello and I love you and Merry Christmas. And when I hung up with them, the phone rang and it was my friend Courtney. And Courtney is a really big dude who lives up in Salt Lake. And up until then, Courtney 
had just been a really good friend of mine. He was my concert buddy. I loved going to concerts with Courtney because he was big, and all I had to do was grab hold of his belt and follow him to the front. He would just part the ways for me. He was he was a lot of fun in those ways. You know, he kind of understood how to help me have the best experience in whatever the situation was. Well, Courtney called me, and I was like, hey, bud, Merry Christmas. And he goes, hey, you want to go to Mexico? And I didn't even think about it. I immediately said, yeah. He said, I'm serious. I said, so am I. He said, I'll be there in three hours. So Courtney drove down from Salt Lake, picked me up at my house. I basically just got in the car and we drove to Mexico. We crossed the border at about two in the morning. We found a gas station where I was able to buy a Mexico keychain. We found a taco place that was open at two in the morning. So we stopped, had some tacos, and then we turned around and drove home. It was one of the most amazing Christmases I'd ever had. And part of the reason why it was so amazing was because it was different. But here's the thing. I went into it with the same expectations that I'd had the first 18 Christmases of my life, that I'm going to wake up on Christmas. There's going to be a big shiny tree. There's going to be a lot of presents under it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll get to watch all my family open their presents and see their joy. And it didn't occur to me until that Christmas day that what I was expecting was not going to happen. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was just different. But I had not rearranged my expectations. I had not reminded myself that what I'm ex- what I've been used to getting for Christmas this year is not what I'm going to get this year. Had I adjusted my expectations, I think that Christmas morning would have been a lot different for me. I think it would have been a lot less sad. However, the thing that I did to make that Christmas better was something completely non-traditional, <clears throat> completely unconventional. Something that you would think that making a round trip drive to Mexico for tacos would not be a standard Christmas. However, my friend Courtney calling me that day and taking me to Mexico for tacos was one of the most memorable Christmases I've ever had. And it started with me that morning not being able to open my presents, getting presents I I didn't want already had somebody else opened them. And it ended with tacos in Mexico. And it ended up being one of, as I said, an amazing Christmas. So my point of the story, Christmas doesn't have to be what you expect it to be. And specifically, the more you build up your expectations based on what Christmas has been for you in the past, based on what you're hoping will happen, you can be pretty let down. And that can be pretty devastating. There's a lot of people. I was blessed with a wonderful childhood. My parents didn't have a lot, but my parents always were really savvy to make sure that at Christmas time, we had enough presents. And enough presents, as far as my parents were concerned, and they had seven children, meant everybody had got something to read, something to wear, something to play with. And really, that was all we needed. And for seven kids, I don't know how my parents did it, but they managed to make sure that we had a good Christmas every year. And a lot of that wasn't about the presents. A lot of that was about the traditions, the decorating gingerbread houses and the Christmas Sunday dinner with grandma and those things. We put so much expectation, even in the events that surround Christmas, this whole month can be really, really difficult. You guys know it's busy. You guys already know it's busy, but what if maybe you didn't have the kind of childhood I did? Maybe Christmas for you meant waking up on Christmas morning and wondering if somebody was going to donate something and you'd get something. Maybe Christmas for you has a lot of negative memories attached to it. If you grew up in a home that was less loving or even abusive, or if you've been in relationships that were abusive around Christmas time, these things can be traumatic. And these things can cause trauma related to Christmas every single year. Let's say you had a traumatic Christmas one time. Every year from that can trigger those sad feelings, those hard feelings, those tough feelings, and make it so much harder. 
So I'm talking to two groups of you. I'm talking to those of you that had childhoods like mine that love Christmas, that look forward to Christmas, that love the lights, that turn on the music the day after Halloween, right? For you people, I want you to understand and remember it's not like this for everyone. I don't want to take away your fun. Enjoy it. By golly, have a fantastic time. But as you're enjoying your Christmas, please keep in mind that it's not like that for everybody. Everybody that you walk by in the store isn't thrilled with the idea of filling their tree with presents. Some of them are crossing their fingers that what they have in their cart will go through without their card being declined. Some of them are only at the store because they need milk. And if they didn't have to be there seeing everybody else celebrating the holidays, they wouldn't be because it's so hard for them. I'm not saying don't enjoy your holiday. I'm saying have some compassion, have some empathy and understanding. Consider that it's not as amazing for everybody else as hopefully it is for you. And when you run into those people, have some understanding for that. Now I'm talking to another group of people. I'm talking to you guys. I'm talking to you that had abusive childhoods. I'm talking to you that woke up on Christmas morning much of the time without anything there. I'm talking to those of you who are alone at Christmas. Do you know that there was an ad that went viral of a grandma seeking a family for Christmas? It was a delightful ad, but it was also kind of sad. Because in this ad, this grandmother on Craigslist or something like that was searching for a family for Christmas. She said, I'm alone. I don't have anyone. Let me come be your grandma. I will bring presents. I will cook dinner. This woman was willing to do anything to be a part of a family at Christmas time, even pay for the presents. Why do you think that is? Because otherwise, this woman would be sitting home alone on Christmas morning without a friend to call her and ask her if she wants to go to Mexico for tacos. You guys, those of you, I hear you. I see you. I hurt with you. And I'm sorry. I know this is a hard time. But I want you to know it's going to pass. It's going to be over. And maybe if you make some small changes, some slight changes, maybe it won't be so bad. And maybe next year might be a little bit better. But hang in there and trust me, it's not always bad. It does get better. Whether it's Christmas or any other time of the year, you can get through this. You can do it. I know you can. Now, one of the best things I think you can do to change how your holiday happens is to change your expectations. Like I said, I grew up used to opening at least three presents every single Christmas morning, surrounded by a family of nine or more if we had extra people there, because that was pretty common. And my first Christmas on my own, had I adjusted my expectations better, it would have been a different situation. It still might have been sad because, you know, having my first Christmas away from my family would have been sad, even if my expectations had been different. But if my expectations had been different, it would have been a whole different situation. Now, I'm not saying don't expect to have fun. What I'm saying is realize that you don't know what's going to happen. Realize it could be great. Realize it could be sad. And just release the expectation that it's going to be one way or the other. Trust that it could be good. Trust that it might not be. And if you're okay either way, you'll be shocked at how well things actually go and how much you actually like it. Here's the biggest thing, and this is disappointment across the board, whether it's holidays or not. Disappointment only comes when your expectations aren't matched. Disappointment only comes after something happened that didn't meet your expectations. If you have no expectations, you cannot be disappointed. Whether you expect good, whether you expect bad. 
if you change that to not expecting anything, that to expect that maybe it'll be good, expect that maybe it'll be bad, expect that anything could happen and you're going to be okay with it no matter what, that's how you make everything better. And it might feel like you're just, when you do that, you're just not caring anymore or just expecting things to be bad. A lot of people do that. You hear people say, well, maybe I just shouldn't expect anything ever. Maybe I should just expect everything to be bad. And then if it is good, I'll be surprised. You hear people say that, but they usually say that in frustration when they're ranting. That's not really what you want. Because when you expect everything to be bad, guess what law of attraction does? It gives you everything bad. One of the most effective ways to use the law of attraction is to be okay with whatever you get and hope for good. So whether this Christmas you're hoping for a lot of things, you might hope for that new car, hope for the bike, or or just hope for somebody to spend it with. Hope for that. Don't give up on that hope. But be okay with whatever happens. Know that if you're on your own, you're going to be okay. The 26th is still going to come. The January 1st is still going to come. 2020 is still going to come. Just release your expectations. You can hope without expecting. Do you understand? So you can hope for good things without necessarily putting all your bets on it, right? And that way when it happens the way it happens, you're okay with whatever it is. And what I find is so magical, when I can do that, when I really can release my hold on what I think something should be, but yet hold on to a hope of what I'd like it to be, it ends up being even better because that's when the law of attraction realizes that the door of allowing is open. And when that door of allowing is open and you're looking the other way, that's when all the good stuff comes in. Another way to fix your holidays is to change your traditions. One of the big problems with Christmas, holidays, Hanukkah, whatever you say, however you see it, is that we put, as a society, as a culture, we place expectations on our traditions. Do you guys understand that? It's not enough to have a big Thanksgiving dinner. It's that you're expected to. Do you understand? So if you don't have a big Thanksgiving dinner and you go to work the next day and people say, oh, hey, how was your Thanksgiving? It can be difficult if you have to say, oh, well, we didn't have one. <clears throat> and you worry, are people going to look down on you? Are you, are, are you not going to be accepted if, you're tra- if your traditions are different? And so because of that, we culturally place ourselves in this position of expectation that the holiday traditions that are working for everyone else are going to work for us. And guess what? You're not everyone else. You're not anyone else. You're you. Your family is unique to you. Your traditions should be unique to you. What if you don't have traditions? What if every year you do things differently? Wonderful. One of the things that we love about the holidays is the traditions. The things that feel familiar from year to year to year. That's one of those things that we love. But you remember that two of our human needs are consistency and inconsistency which means we love that tradition, the consistency of the holidays, but also that we need it to change up. We need to juggle those traditions a little bit and play with them. What does that mean for you? Does that mean instead of Thanksgiving, you have Friendsgiving? This year, we hosted our second Friendsgiving, and it was amazing. And guys, Friendsgiving is the best because if you're hosting, you almost don't have to cook. You just tell everybody else to bring the food. That's my trick. Change your traditions. Thanksgiving dinner doesn't have to be a big turkey. If you don't like turkey, Thanksgiving dinner could be spaghetti. In fact, one of my favorite family traditions that is different from the standard tradition is every year for Christmas Eve dinner, we eat chili dogs. And some other families I know for Christmas Eve dinner are doing big turkeys and hams and everybody dresses up. Well, we do chili dogs in pajamas. You know what? We spend enough money on the presents. I don't want to spend money or time on dinner. So we have chili dogs. And it's such a tradition. 
that when we go to family for Christmas, they know it and they make chili dogs and they love it too. So we're able to share our little tradition that way. Can that change? Yes. Have there been some Christmas Eves that we had something besides chili dogs? Yes. And was that okay? Yeah, it was. But my traditions are different from your traditions and your traditions should be your own. If you're by yourself, make up a new tradition. Go look at the lights by yourself. Buy yourself Starbucks and drive around and look at the lights. If you're by yourself and you have the ability to share what you have, maybe do like that grandma did. Do you guys know how many Facebook, if you go onto Facebook yard sale, you can find groups, people just talking, saying, I need help for Christmas. I have three kids. This is what they need. Hoping that somebody else will see that and will bless their family for Christmas. You have the opportunity to do that. And it might be that you invite somebody over to your house. It might be that you invite yourself over to somebody else. For Christmas dinner, we're always afraid to invite ourselves over. <clears throat> but yet, most everybody can easily set an extra table for Christmas dinner. Don't be afraid to call someone up and say, hey, I don't have anywhere for Christmas dinner. Can I come to your house? Chances are, they're going to say yes. <clears throat> and it might be a little bit scary to put yourself out there to make that phone call. Guys, consider this. Is it harder to pick up the phone to call someone? You don't even have to know them well. Somebody that you're pretty sure is going to be having a dinner on Christmas. Pick them up, pick up the phone and say, hey, I don't have anywhere for Christmas dinner. Can I come to your house? 99% chance they're going to say yes unless they're going to be out of town. But how much, and that phone call may make you really uncomfortable, but how much more uncomfortable are you going to be sitting home alone on Christmas? That phone call, as uncomfortable as it might be, might change your world on Christmas Day. Don't be afraid to break out of tradition. Don't be afraid to break out of what everybody else is doing. Recognize that so much of why the holidays are disappointing is because of the expectations that we are handed. We are given by society and our culture an expectation that there will be presents under your tree on Christmas morning. And if you don't have that, that something is wrong with you. Let me clear that for you. Gone, done, be done with that expectation. Your Christmas is what you want it to be. Your Christmas is what you choose it to be. You might choose, one of my friends are choosing to not do Christmas morning at all and they're taking their kids on a cruise in a couple months. That sounded like a great way to spend Christmas for me. But remember, if you're someone who has a lot of disappointment around the holidays, one, change your traditions. Two, change your expectations. And three, be okay with whatever ends up anyway. Hope for the best. Be okay with whatever. That was a little hack that people told me on my wedding day, which was over two decades ago. They said, wedding days can be awful. If you have a lot of ideas in your mind of how this is going to happen, exactly how this should work, how the perfect picture that you want your entire wedding to be, if you have that picture in your mind and you're expecting that, you're going to be really, really disappointed. If you just know that today is the best day because you're doing what you want to do, you're marrying the person that you want to marry, and it's amazing because of that, and anything else that happens is okay. And that advice gave me an amazing experience on my wedding day. The cake got smashed, no big deal. Little things, it rained in the morning, no big deal. Everything worked out exactly perfectly. And yet I'd had no expectations about what that was going to look like. All I cared about at the end of the day was that I was married to Chris. And that was enough for me. And everything else just fell into place. So guys, these holidays, please, whether you're the person who loves everything about Christmas and the biggest thing you get irritated about is that you forgot to move your elf on the shelf last night, or if you're a person who turns off your social media and hides under the covers for the entire month of December, I want you to know it can be better. I want you to have some understanding and empathy for those around you. Remember the holidays. It's not about Christmas. It's about love. It's not about presents. 
when you give someone a gift, you're not giving them a, a thing as much as you're giving them a representation that you care about them. Whether it's something from the dollar store or something from Dillard's, a gift simply says, I care about you. And remember that, that you can give a gift that says, I care about you from the dollar store. Change your Christmas, change your holidays by changing your expectations. Give yourself a break and give those around you a break too. And my friends, I wish you the very best. I will be here next week, two days before Christmas. Come back and check me out. Then it's going to be a really, really, really great show. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next week. Remember, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I'm just trying to get you to think for yourself. You've been listening to The Extraordinary Talk Show with Della Hill. Search YouTube and Facebook, Spotify, or Podbean for video and podcasts of this show. Or go to RadioStGeorge.com. We'll see you next week for another edition of The Extraordinary Talk Show.